Hi, it's Dr. Scott McLean, and I'm doing a review of the Sprint Ray Pro Printer. And it's doing a little print job behind me right now, so you can kind of hear it. But what we're doing is uh, just evaluating this printer. We just purchased it, quite excited about it. It's a um, DLP printer. So there's two different types that we've been using, the SLA and now the DLP. The SLA prints kind of like tracing around, where the DLP is more of a stamp light printer so it's a digital light projection type of imaging and when it's printing it's fairly quiet it's uh, all wireless so you're on your computer you're going to design something and then push a button send it to the printer just like you're printing a document on your other printer at home and then once the product comes out we're going to talk a little bit about that and how this all works to make this easy in your life so let's check this out this sprint ray we'll see what's happening with it if we look at the Sprint Ray Pro a little bit closer, you can see it has this orange hood, and the hood is to protect the light from going in and curing the resin. And it has a small footprint, which is, is quite nice. It's uh, got a good design, so it has this hood that lifts up and down, and you can put your projects in and out. But um, let's look at a couple little features that kind of make this kind of special. Now, when you open the hood, you'll get a good look at the print platform which is quite generous it's quite big and this is uh, for you to do more projects so when it's printing this print platform is going to dip down into the resin tank and so the resin tank is going to hold the different resins you're going to use whether you're doing a model or printing a template for placing implants or bite planes or dentures there's a whole bunch of different projects and you'll use different resins in the sprint ray to do this so you can see the nice LED um, readout which you can do touch screen this is quite nice and uh, most of the projects are going to come right from the software that's provided by sprint ray to your device so that it kind of uh, you design it send it over and it actually bypasses and just kind of starts to print so if you want to change the settings like change the microns for the print which means that you're changing the resolution of the printer and the resolution of the printer will determine how accurate the model actually is so more accurate models take a little bit longer to print so we are at the lab here with Mike Ritter dental technician and we're going to just talk a little bit about the uh, Sprint Ray printer. We just got this in and we're quite excited about this. We've been using it for about a month now. We've been using other printers for a number of years, but this is our second printer. So we went to a DLP printer rather than an SLA printer for the kind of uh, quality and also speed. And so Mike's gonna tell us a little bit about this. Uh, take it away, Mike. Yeah, thanks, Scott. So what you see here today is um, the latest uh, Sprint Ray printer that's been out for a little while here in the market. And um, it's a remarkable um, addition to our production here. As you can see here, it's um, just a very easy to put anywhere in your lab. It uh, can fit anywhere on any desktop or any counter or any shelving unit that you have. It comes with um, the printer, of course, and then the light box. So um, uh, you get your uh, your liquids that you get with this product. Right now we have the dye and model tan liquid in there right now. I'm just gonna raise this up here a little bit just to give you a little view of what it looks like inside. Now inside is a resin tank and you can put different types of resin into this tank depending on what you wanna print. So if you want to print a model, we have the, the model printing resin here. And you can see that uh, Mike's using a resin wiper to kind of do some maintenance to make sure that the mixture is very homogenous. Now on the LED screen, you can see we have the resolution set to 50 microns, which produces a very smooth model for doing accurate dentistry. Now the project all starts on the print platform, which you can see here is attached with that orange knob and you'll be able to take this off. But many projects can be done at the same time and they drop down into the resin tank and then the light starts to turn on and start to create the project. So very cool and so you can see many projects can be done at the same time. Now you can also see a USB port if you want to put the project directly into the printer. But let's have a look at the uh, once the project has been printed in 3D form you're going to do a post cure with the Procure 
light box. So let's check this out with Mike. So on this sprint way, this is the light curing box. So when you're going to do it after you print your models, you're just going to wash your models in a in a liquid um, isopropylene wash bath. And then you're going to bring them over here and you're just going to select, let's say, your model model resin. And then it's, you're going to just push start and it'll just cure away. It, it uh, will cure that in a really fast time too. So now how did you find that this worked compared to the other uh, printer we were using? Well, it works um, relatively the same, but it's a much faster unit. Once it's gone through that process, it's done. You just take it out of there. So you've got something in there now, don't you? I do. We uh, we got something already cooking. Yeah. yeah, we just open that up. So you can see in there, there's a couple models that we uh, printed off. Now, how are you finding the uh, kind of smoothness or what they call the Z or Z factor, which is the print up and down? Yeah, they're very smooth now. I'm just going to grab one of these here and you just show you right up close here. Maybe we can see that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are super smooth. Like, even to the touch, like if you feel that with your fingers, you're, it is smooth. There's no abrasive feel to that. It's very, very smooth. So you're happy with that? I'm very happy with that. Yep. We make hollowed models just to save on material. So now can you choose hollow versus uh, solid as well? Yes, we can. Um, that's just done in the software choice. Um, when you're in your uh, your CAD design, when you're sending it off to um, to this the Sprint Ray um, software, you do that in, in your CAD design choice there. And uh, yeah, that's how that works. Here's one for an on one. That's going to be an on one um, replica is going to be going in there. Again, just a solid model. I make them nice and small just to save on material. Yeah, it works really good. Now with the digital workflow, you're going to use some software. So what happens is you'll use an infrared scanner or a lab desktop scanner and it'll, you'll send it to the lab technician or if that's you, you may be doing this yourself because I think a lot of dental offices will actually be doing this kind of stuff themselves. So you'll be taking, um, you know, making templates and printing them out. And, and so many dental offices will be doing this very easy. So you use a software. This is DTX Studio software. This happens to be a DTX Studio Lab. And we go and design what we want to make. So we're taking the STL files. These are surface files. So they're like CAS. And we start to do something like either generating, you know, a die kind of model for making an implant crown. And we take the file. So here's the STL file that comes in. We can generate this crown, which is going to be an on one a crown. So this is an on one abutment with a zirconia crown that's going to go on top. And when we design this, then we're using 3D technology to make a real fantastic way to uh, really get this done fast and accurate. And we're actually scanning this in the mouth without even changing the abutment. So what happens is when the patient's in for their surgery, then I'm placing an intraoral scannable abutment. So this is a kind of a healing abutment that goes on the patient and enables them to then go home and heal. And then, and then I'll come back and scan that. And this image actually shows what that scannable abutment looks like. So all I do is take my intraoral scanner go through the patient's mouth and then send this file off to Mike and Mike's going to get it back in the lab and he'll start to generate the uh, the crown that we need to make so he'll make a printable model and this is going to be sent off and uh, the computer will actually generate a spot for the replica to be placed into the model so we're going to show you that in a second but what happens is he'll generate all this uh, technology and uh, where this is going to be and then order a replica from Nobel BioCare and we'll snap it in and he'll do his final crown manufacture so you can make actually a zirconia crown that gets cemented on this post and then we cut a hole in the top and make it into a screwmentable type of crown system so because we don't want to have cement down around the top of the implant but this model is going to be printed very fast very accurate and it's going to save you uh, a lot of time in the long run because 
This can be stored on a digital file. And so as the print platform comes down into the resin tank, the process starts layer by layer. So it's a digital layering process. And this enables you to print this file. So once it's all done, and depending on the resolution, it's going to take different times, then Mike's going to come in and he'll take the print platform and he can remove this. And this can actually go right in to the cleaning uh, tanks. And after it's cleaned, you're going to take it to the Procure light curing box. And this just gives that resin that last little zap to make it really cure. And so the first cure is done with the DLP uh, light projection unit. So inside of the orange box. And then the final cure is done with the Procure. And once it's fully cured, you'll clean it up. So take the scaffolds off and get it ready to do your post-production uh, crown fabrication. And once we take the model, we're able to snap the replica in. So this replica is bought from the manufacturer. We can take this, position it, and then use a tool to kind of snap it down into place. And look how smooth these models are. Instead of having the lines that you see on many of the printed models, these are smooth. And that's pretty cool because we don't want to have uh, kind of rough models. This is about printing for more accuracy, not less accuracy. Because you can have a really great scanner, but unless you have a good printer, you're not going to get a good product on the other end. And so it's really about uh, getting that accuracy of print. And because look at the articulation, and when you mount this on an articulator and start to do your fabrication, it does matter. And uh, so it is important to, to kind of work that through. So this is Dr. Scott McLean, and, and my final words about this, when you're going to buy a printer for doing 3D printing in your dental office, consider accuracy as the number one point that you want to get, then speed. Make sure you're, you're picking a printer that's going to kind of fit into your needs of what you're going to make too, like whether you're going to make guides for doing implants or if you're still going to start to make uh, bite planes. These are fantastic for bite planes because you can use the Sprint Race software to even generate these. Or if you're going to make a uh, crown and bridge or dentures. So you need something that has a whole bunch of different features. And um, I think this uh, product delivers. We've been using an SLA printer for quite a while. It worked well. It's good for doing splints, but you can't really get into, in my opinion, uh, crown and bridge model work. So this is Dr. Scott McLean. If you're going to get a printer, check this printer out. There's a number of them on the market, but certainly check out the Sprint Ray Pro.